Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson, and this is an AI 101 video on Monte Carlo Tree Search. In this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of the Monte Carlo Tree Search or MCTS algorithm, how it operates in the general sense, as well as why it's now utilized in a variety of problem spaces such as video game AI opponents, as well as expert computer players in video games. MCTS is a heuristic-driven search algorithm that's a combination of classic tree search implementations alongside machine learning principles of reinforcement learning. Tree search algorithms connect the potential states of a given problem by the actions that will achieve them. We then write algorithms that can search within this space in order to make intelligent decisions that yield a desired outcome by exploring the tree to find a desired goal state. The simplest versions of these are the uninformed algorithms such as breadth and depth first search which follow very strict and specific ordering of states to visit, while more intelligent algorithms such as A-star use metrics such as the cost of an action as well as a heuristic that estimates the value of a state in solving a problem. Meanwhile, reinforcement learning is a branch of machine learning algorithms that learns good strategies for the problem it's trying to solve. It aims to achieve an optimal strategy by repeatedly using the best actions it has found in that problem. However, there's always the possibility that the current best action is in actuality not optimal. As such, it will continue to evaluate alternatives periodically during the learning phase by executing them instead of the perceived optimal. This is known in reinforcement learning as the exploration-exploitation trade-off, where it will exploit the actions and strategies it has found to be the best, but must also continue to explore the local space of alternative decisions and see whether they could replace the current best. This is a difficult process to resolve, given that sometimes we need to really explore a series of decisions to discover that an action that might look bad now will actually prove to be a really good idea somewhere down the line. The perceived value of these actions and their subsequent states is encoded into the state space itself, with the value of a state being continually updated and improved the more the algorithm tries options available to it and then learns whether it was a good decision or not. MCTS essentially merges these two practices together. It uses a tree model of the world that it searches for the best possible path by exploring specific subsections of the tree, calculating how effective they were, and then updating the value of states within that based on the outcome. By doing this hundreds if not thousands of times, it can establish the best path to take through the tree and give the best answer to a given problem. This repeated evaluation in order to determine the value of a given state or strategy is derived from the Monte Carlo method, a type of algorithm that repeatedly samples a problem space randomly in order to obtain a more accurate understanding of the best answers within it. It carries many similarities to an existing algorithm for tree search called Minimax, which also evaluates all the options of the tree in order to make a decision. The problem with Minimax is when we're in large problem spaces where there are a large number of actions an agent can execute, it increases the number of states on the next layer down in the tree that the algorithm has to explore. This is a property known as the branching factor. If branching factor is high, then algorithms like Minimax don't scale well at all, given they need to evaluate every opportunity quite thoroughly, with some adapted versions such as alpha beta pruning a requirement to explore large and complex problems. This is where MCTS proves its value. It only searches a couple of layers deep into the tree, prioritizes what parts of the tree to explore, simulates the outcome rather than exhaustively expand the search space, and can be limited in how many evaluations it makes. This helps with problems with very high branching factor, as it will isolate what parts of the tree it should explore. The individual evaluations are reliant on the use of a playout, but the algorithm effectively plays the game from a given starting point all the way to the end by making random decisions, a concept derived from the Monte Carlo method. Now exploring the future states of a game can be difficult to do depending on the game itself. Board games are often easier to encode and allow for time to run the evaluations. However, large-scale real-time video games make it even more difficult. As such, MCDS uses what's called a forward model, an abstract approximation of the game logic that allows it to consider the outcome of playing action X in state Y, resulting in outcome Z. It runs playouts to a terminal state and then records the result, which is then used to update the value of a given state in the tree. Once it's done running the evaluations, it simply selects the action that had the best rollout score. The smart part comes in how each rollout is decided upon and executed. To do this, it relies on four key steps. Selection, expansion, simulation, and backpropagation. Selection takes the current state of the tree and selects decisions down that tree to a future state at a fixed depth. Expansion then moves one step down to expose a new state in the tree, provided the state we reached didn't end the game, either as a win or loss, or exceeds the tree depth. It's then going to simulate the value of that state. 
Simulation is the random playout phase. It plays a game of completely random decisions from this point until it reaches either a terminal state where it wins or loses or a simulation cap is reached. It then gives back a result of how well it performed as a score. This is passed to the backpropagation phase. In backpropagation, we update the perceived value of a given state, not just to the state we ran the rollout, but every state that led to it in the tree. So any score, be it positive or negative, propagates back up the tree to the starting point. Through these four phases, we can take decisions to a fixed point in the tree, simulate their outcome, propagate back the perceived value of it. Now, doing this once isn't enough. You have to do it hundreds, thousands of times and balance which playouts to make, which I'll come back to in a second. But once the playout limit is reached, it's done and it takes the action leading to the best value state. Different MCTS algorithms balance the playouts such that they shift focus to different parts of the tree periodically to ensure there are no better solutions to be found that didn't otherwise spot. The original implementation of this balancing act is UCT or Upper Confidence Bound 1 applied to trees. UCT chooses which node to visit next based on the equation shown on screen now. Using these on the left hand side of the equation is ensuring we retain some aspect of history in the decision making. This is the exploitation part of the algorithm. Meanwhile, these last two are the exploration component, meaning it will periodically encourage exploring other parts of the space as the number of evaluations increases. What makes this system even more powerful is that it's what we call an anytime algorithm, meaning it will always give an answer regardless of how many playouts we let it make. So in a context like a game, where CPU and memory resources are pretty tight, if it needs to stop evaluating the game at a moment's notice, it will still give the best answer it could within that time. Despite this, giving it a massive amount of CPU resource won't necessarily result in godlike AI, given the knowledge accrued from repeatedly running playouts may eventually level out. MCTS is proving very popular in areas of general intelligence and expert play, most notably as part of the action selection process in the expert Go player AlphaGo by Google DeepMind, but also in the video game industry. To date, the most notable examples of its adoption include the sadly cancelled Fable Legends alongside the Total War franchise, a point I discuss at length in parts 3 and 4 of my AI of Total War series. But it's also being used in research in areas such as Ms. Pac-Man, Magic the Gathering, and also general intelligence as part of the general video game AI competition. This has been the AI 101 on Monte Carlo Tree Search. I'm Tommy Thompson, and this AI 101 video, like all my other case studies, video essays, tutorials, and the like, are supported thanks to my sponsors over at patreon.com forward slash AI underscore and underscore games. Thanks to these awesome people, they provide support that allows me to make more of these videos for you all out there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.